I'm James Gosling, and this is a Star 7. Star 7s were built as a part of the Green Project at Sun Laboratories between 1991 and 1992. These are a prototype sort of handheld device that was built to do some exploration of some issues into consumer electronics. The Star 7 is uh, its guts is a uh, it's a uh, spark station motherboard. The screen is from a sharp LCD color television. There's a 900 megahertz spread spectrum, 200 kilobits um, radio. There's a couple of PCMCIA card slots. There's an infrared transceiver for talking to TVs and VCRs and that sort of stuff. Uh, and a couple of speakers off of a Nintendo Game Boy. The uh, motherboard is just a MicroSpark 2 that's been re-engineered and shrunk down and it had a lot of really exotic sort of flexible board technology. So now let's try to boot this thing up. That boot sequence actually contains a complete user's manual. What you can do is put your finger down over some open unused space and slide it around and that lets you navigate from, from place to place within one area. And then if you put your finger down on top of an active object then it goes through some kind of an animation and then eventually executes some action. And that action is, in most spaces, um, something that, that, that takes you to another place. So let's take a look at that again. Okay, now let's use a real finger for this. And we'll navigate into the house again. And once we're there, you'll see that uh, in the lower right-hand corner, there's a little thing that we call the Wayback Button. And the Wayback Button is, as the name would imply, your way back to wherever you came from. And it contains a picture of wherever you came from, and that's uh, updated live. <coughs> Now let's go into the living room. In the living room there are a variety of objects. One of the metaphors we tried to use was to have backgrounds be soft muted colors whereas active things are uh, much more saturated. So here you can see a TV and a VCR and a copy of the TV guide. Let's go into the TV. You also just saw some scroll bars which if you notice had some inertia so you could flick them and things would keep on spinning. Let's go into another scrolling space, this time the TV guide. And one of the interesting things about it is, that it is that you can zoom in and out and things gain and lose detail as you go back and forth.
there's a simple gesture language. One of the things you can do with that is you can tear things off. And once you've got something torn off, you can move it around or you can hand it to the agent. Now, the agent is this little friendly guy down in the lower left hand corner. Um, and as you move from space to space, you notice that the agent stays with you. And one of the things you can do with the agent is you can go into his space and you'll find there all the things that you've dropped on him. Tearing off and dropping metaphor works all over the place. One of the more important places is with the TV guide. You can tear off TV shows and do things like drop them on the agent. When dragging objects, you can do things with them other than just moving them around and dropping them on the agent. You can also carry them through portals and drop them on other objects which behave uh, in a type dependent way. So one of the more useful things you can do is you can uh, rip off a show from the TV guide and then drop it on something like a VCR or a television which tells it to record or show that, uh, that particular show. One of the more sophisticated parts of the Star 7 was its distributed object model that made use of the, the network on the radio. The way that this was manifested in the user interface was a place called a whiteboard. Whiteboards were linked to off of the, the address books and they uh, dealt with communications between users. And one of the things you could do with the whiteboard was you could tear off objects and then drag and drop them onto the whiteboard. And when you did that, they showed up on the screen of the other Star 7 that you were communicating with. You could also do stuff like scribble on the whiteboard and they'd show up on your, on your friend's whiteboard and, and vice versa. <laughs> Well, that's about it. The Star 7 was a lot of fun, and there was quite a group of people who worked on it. Mike Sheridan did a lot of the, the sort of business stuff. Joe Palarang did most of the artwork. Um, Ed Frank, Craig Forrest, and Al Fraser did most of the hardware. Um, Chris Warth, Patrick Naughton, John Payne, and myself did most of the software. And sort of cooperatively, we all, we all worked and brainstormed on issues about the UI and the overall system.